All right, I'm using a uh, urethane foam system, A and B components, and uh, you combine the two components and they make a foam that rises and uh, fills in spaces. I'm going to do that uh, for the base on this uh, buffalo today. This stuff is not for kids to mess with. You get this on your clothes or on your hands, you're going to have it there for, well, on your clothes, you'll have it there forever. On your hands, it'll take a long time to go away. Okay, let's get busy. First thing I'm going to do is create a uh, reservoir for the uh, foam to go into. I got the reservoir made, and uh, now takes uh, equal amounts of uh, the AB mixture and uh, I got just a little bit too much there. It and it, what it does is it turns kind of foamy looking the vanilla color for a second here. It doesn't take long once you mix it before it starts expanding. So I want to get this in here. And what this does, it just keeps me from having to use a lot of clay. already getting warm to my finger. Now I got some drops here on the uh, board but I'll just wait till it hardens and expands to uh, take it off because it'll just come right off. I can't see any leaks. If I put 
put down a good uh, reservoir here. This will save me probably six pounds of clay. And it's just a few pennies and uh, I'm not worried about it overflowing there. I can always take that off and trim it down. But it only takes a little, as you can see right here. And that's all you need. Okay, the uh, foam is completely hard now. There's no stickiness to it. It came right up to the bottom of the hoof here, which is great. Okay, I'm going to uh, cut into the foam. I think uh, what I might do is take this outside because I don't want foam dust all over the place. I'd rather have it outside where it can blow away and go away. came up over the uh, hoof in the front and I'm just trying to get it off without ruining the foot but I'm not going to be able to so I'll have to redo the foot. No big deal.
Well, I didn't talk a lot outside because of the wind. I knew that the mic would be uh, hampered by that. I want to take this moment to uh, remind you I do have instructional videos on how to sculpt that uh, where I give you you know my 50 year over 50 years of experience sculpting uh, little tips and little tricks and uh, things you can do to make your sculptures and your clays look a lot better um, I put a link below and uh, hopefully hopefully you'll take a sh uh, look at the short uh, videos on each one of my uh, videos that I have available both on DVD and on uh, a uh, streaming on on U YouTube so I, I would really appreciate that uh, and uh, now let's get back to him Uh, well, it looks better. I'm going to have to do something about the blockiness of the whole thing, but uh, I think I'll be fine. I'm going to quickly cover this foam only because I don't want any loose particles getting into the clay because then it really causes problems later on. I'm really surprised at how that foam only came up to the bottom of his hook. That, that, that's great. I didn't plan it, but uh, it's great when it works. I'll tell you what, I'm going to come back after I get this covered in clay and uh, we'll continue on. Alright, what I did was I took some scrap foam that I cut off of the uh, main foam and uh, I glued them down to give me kind of an extension on the uh, the base because it, it looked kind of weird having his head way out here and nothing balancing it out. And uh, I've glued it down with uh, Elmer's glue. It's going to take probably uh, overnight to get that to harden. There was a little hole in it. I just filled it in with clay. But that's as much as I'm going to do with that. I've got to come up with a design on the base to make it interesting. Uh, right now it's just a cake, and I don't want a cake. So let's get busy on working on his hair texture. I'm going to use this uh, broken rock that I got from the front yard and uh, put some texture into his fur. Now there'd be a skin, you know, skin around the bottom of the eye. The fur doesn't come up to the eye, at least from what I've seen in photographs and in real life. I mean, I only have maybe an hour's drive from here to get to where I can see buffalo because they uh, are in Yellowstone Park, and I'm only 80 miles from Yellowstone, so. But uh, it's, uh, it's a good resource when you're working with wildlife animals and stuff like that. I've got some great photographs of elk and uh, buffalo from Yellowstone. My eye is a lot better today. And uh, I'm still getting tears flowing out of it. But it's, uh, it doesn't hurt as much the last couple of days as it has in the past. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm putting lighter fluid, this, this Ron, Ronsonol lighter fluid on the uh, 
the brush and I'm just uh, lightly going over it. And it's a soft brush and it's also an oil painter's brush. Um, if you get a cheap brush from a hobby store, uh, you'll get a lot of uh, a lot of the uh, bristles coming off into the clay and then they're hard to get out. If you have a friend who does oil painting, they go through brushes like nobody's business and uh, I'm sure they got old paint brushes that uh, they'd be glad to let you have and uh, that's where I got this was uh, from my friend Todd Connor who's a uh, Western art paint artist uh, really well known and uh, he always has left you know brushes that have been o overused and they get the bristles wear off uh, the edges of it, so they lose their usefulness after a while. If, you, if you've uh, used these brushes before, they get clay on them and they get a little stiff, but a little of the lighter fluid will just uh, soften them up again. Okay, I'm going to take this hard rubber tool to uh, give texture to this uh, long fur that uh, would hang over his brow or his forehead but when he's running uh, it uh, flies back. I'm not sure I'm happy with this yet. Well, it's, it's coming along. It's going to take time. The, you know, doing the fur texture is very important. Uh, I don't have to do that on uh, the whole body, but uh, I want to texture the body too somehow, or at least get it to a point where I like it. Give me a thumbs up and share my video. And then check out my instructional DVDs, uh, the link down below this video. All right. See you next time.